Coming up on the Reef Builders Recap, we have tons of beautiful new species of reef fish, some amazing coral eye candy, and all the new product news in the aquarium hobby from the past week. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Reef Builders Recap. I am Jake Adams and I have a lot of cool stuff to tell you about today. There's been a lot of new species of reef fish described. We've seen some amazing corals and there's some great new products on the horizon. So let's get started. First up is Oxychylinus samurai, the new samurai wrasse. This species comes to us from the waters of southern Japan. This species is light red overall and is very similar to Oxychylinus bifasciata. Moving right along, we have a few new species of basslets from the Caribbean. Now, last year, we saw a lot of new Leopropoma species being described. Um, these are all mostly deep water species of reef fish, but this time it is the Lipogramma genus that gets a turn. Lipogramma currently includes some beautiful fairy basslets. Most of these are really only found in very deep water. The two new species of basslets from the Caribbean include Lipogramma habarorum and Lipogramma levinsoni. These two species are very similar to Lipogramma avides, um, a very small, expensive fish that comes from really deep water. The fish which we had been calling Lipogramma avides turns out to be a new species, Lipogramma levinsoni. The other officially described new species of reef fish is one which actually has been enjoyed by some Japanese aquarists for the last few years. The new Plectranthia species was described by several authors, including Yikai T, the fish nerd formerly known as Lemon TYK. This beautiful Plectranthius is also known as the Hinomaru basslet or perchlet because of its red spot that is similar to the flag of Japan with the red spot on a white background. This is a beautiful species of basslet. It really hasn't been seen outside of the southern waters of Japan, but it's a, a, an amazing addition to our lexicon of beautiful deep water reef aquarium fish. Also new but not yet described is a crazy little specimen of trima from the deep waters of Palau. This photograph came to us this week from Dr. Luis Rocha, who is currently in Palau, doing some deep diving surveys along with the team from the California Academy of Sciences. This gorgeous little trimmer has a beautiful opalescent blue body, bright blue eyes, and a couple horizontal orange lines, which is like no other species of trimmer that we've seen before. Another fish that we featured this week is a spectacular specimen of a raccoon butterfly fish hybrid. Coming to us from Mr. Yi in Taiwan, this hybrid of the panda butterfly fish and the raccoon butterfly fish clearly shows the characteristics of both parent species. Hybrids of angelfish and butterfly fish are very rare, but we definitely take note every time we see them. And it's just such a pleasure to be able to not only see this fish, but to share it with you guys. And finally, a little bit of eye candy for you. Here we have an amazing scribbled lemon peel angelfish from sustainable reef suppliers in Vanuatu. Now, I don't know what's in the water in Vanuatu, but SRS always comes up with these amazing, crazy, beautiful angelfish, especially the orange varieties of coral beauty. Earlier this year, we saw the uh, snow leopard multibar angelfish. And these unusual scribbled lemon peel angelfish are just truly stunning and they really are only found in Vanuatu. Moving right along, we featured some really beautiful corals this week. First up is this crazy endophilia from Bali Aquarium. Now, if you're not familiar with endophilia, it's kind of like a cross between your typical scolemia, the big fat fleshy acanthophilia, and the Cynorina lacrimalis. Now, cynorinas are generally really pink and have large bubbly vesicles and somewhere in between you find endophilia and endophilia can is really a crapshoot. Some of those corals can have a totally brown color, some of them can be pink, but every now and then we see some amazing specimens like this one shared to us from Bali Aquarium with the pink vesicles with the green lines in between. These pictures don't show this coral completely expanded and inflated polyp, but I assure you, once this coral settles into aquarium life, it's going to be quite a stunning specimen. Also, later last week, I was just perusing some websites. You know, I like to go around to some of the different coral vendors and do a little window shopping. And uh, I landed at Pacific East Aquaculture. And I was really impressed and surprised to see some amazing and actually rare corals for sale. These LPS corals included Echinomorpha and Australomusa, that is now known as Periscalemia. 
While everyone is busy fighting for the most crazy colorful chalice coral strains and paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars for a one inch frag, Pacific East Aquaculture actually had some full colonies of these Periscalemias and these Echinomorphas for sale with really unusual colors. These two groups of corals are really don't get nearly as much attention in the aquarium hobby as they should because they have the potential to have some crazy coloration. The Australomuses with their red color and orange mouths will stand out in just about any kind of aquarium. And Echinomorpha is a coral that is still really crazy rare in the aquarium hobby. I've only seen a handful, maybe a couple dozen in my life, but the few that you do see really have amazing color and these crazy pattern like this warp speed kind of morpha that was named by Pacific East Aquaculture. The great thing about these corals is that there's very little demand for them. So if you're a true coral connoisseur, you can pick up an amazing colony at an affordable price. And finally, an amazing colony of homophilia came to us from Ultra Corals Australia. This amazing coral has four polyps in four coralites, and they're a little bit larger than what you would expect for a Bauer Banky. And that's precisely why it got our attention. It's hard to know whether these are four polyps of a homophilia australis close together, which can happen once in a while with the true Australian scoli, or if it's a colony of homophilia Bauer Banky. However, none of that would matter if it didn't have this amazing coloration. The grayish base with the orange stripes and green stripes and modeling of all different colors really makes this coral colony a one-of-a-kind specimen. It's getting towards the end of the year, so news are a little bit quiet as far as new product announcements go, but we still managed to wrangle up a few new products coming next year. First up is an exciting new protein skimmer from Aquaforest. The body of the Aquaforest protein skimmer is a conventional design. It's got a conical top. It's got a secondary cone above a nice big white bubble diffuser plate. So there's nothing really groundbreaking when it comes to the design of this particular protein skimmer's body. But what really grabs my attention is the use of brand new controllable DC pumps from Aquabee. My first experience with an needle wheel skimmer ever was a DOS Aquarium protein skimmer, Dutch Aquarium Systems, and it used an Aqua B pump. And I'll just never forget the huge head of really, really fine froth that came up from it back before anyone really knew what needle wheel skimmers were capable of. Because they use Aqua B pumps, these are not gonna be cheap protein skimmers, but you can be assured that they're gonna give you a ton of performance. They're gonna be really silent. And best of all, they're gonna produce a lot of foam in your protein skimmer body. eShops announced a new line of protein skimmers called the Axiom series. These will replace the previous PSK line of protein skimmers, and they still use the venerable CHA pump, but the pump has been moved inside the body, and a lot of different space-saving features have been incorporated to give the Axiom line of protein skimmers from eShops a much reduced footprint and increased performance. This is not the high-end protein skimmer that eShops has been teasing for a while with the spiral dif bubble diffuser plate, but we expect to have some news on that later this week. One of the boutique brands of water pump manufacturers is Panta Ray. Panta Ray makes a few different types of water pumps, most notably the Hydro Wizard in a few different sizes. The Hydro Wizard 42 is the smallest pump in the line, and after a couple years on the market, Panta Ray has released or announced a, Pan a Hydro Wizard 42 Pro version. Now, what's different about this one is instead of having a clear body, it has a black housing. The fins on the intake of the pump are closer together, making it harder to suck in any snails or small fish. It also has a much longer power and control cord. And cosmetically, the controller for the Hydro Wizard 42 Pro also has a magnetic backing to make it a little bit easier to mount in and around your aquarium system. This week, we saw an update on the KH Guardian. Coral View just announced a limited release of this new alkalinity controller and monitor. And what's cool is we learned two things. One, there's gonna be a limited release of just 100 units offered to select users. They don't wanna give out this new technology to just anyone. Coral View wants to ensure that the first batch of KH Guardians go to experienced reefers who know how to monitor and manage alkalinity in their reef aquarium. The other thing that we learned about the KH Guardian is that there's going to be a pro version. The suggested retail price for the KH Guardian is going to be $1,269, but people participating in the limited release of the KH Guardian will 
get two things. One, the introductory price will be 1069 and they will get a free upgrade to the pro version of the KH Guardian that we don't know anything about. I have no doubt that this technology is inevitable in the aquarium hobby as the electronics and the know-how is all shrunk into smaller and more affordable package. Wrapping things up on the new product front, we have an announcement of a new top-off reservoir from Innovative Marine. Most of us probably just use buckets, jugs, spare tanks, or whatever you have lying around that will hold water to use as a reservoir for your aquarium. But Innovative Marine has put some thought and some care into their new Hydrofill TI Reservoir. The Hydrofill Reservoir is made of glass with a plastic drawer that makes it a lot easier to top off without moving the reservoir from inside the stand. If you've ever had a top off reservoir inside of your aquarium stand, you know how challenging it can be sometimes to top off this reservoir without moving it. To solve this issue, the Hydrofill Reservoir includes a drawer that essentially acts like a funnel to make sure that you can easily top off the reservoir. And there's also a water level indicator just in case it's too dark in your aquarium stand to see what the exact water level is. And now a little bit of eye candy from our friends at Worldwide Corals. What I'm showing you is a collection of photographs that I took earlier this year while I was in Orlando for the Reef of Palooza event. And while you're in Orlando, if you're a diehard reefer, you've got to go by Worldwide Corals retail shop and see their amazing diversity of all kinds of different corals. What I really want you to get from these photographs is just how healthy, just how polyped out and extended the tentacles of stony coral polyps are when they are in their peak of health and also the range and contrast of colors that you see from the colony to the tips. And I'm really excited to revisit the shop because a lot of these frags are just small little encrusted things that still haven't developed their full potential. And I'm just completely a sucker for Acropora fluorescence, especially when they're small and cute like that before they get huge and weedy. With proper care, SPS corals really are mind blowing. It's a challenge to give them everything that they need to stay happy and healthy. But uh, not only does Worldwide Corals do this uh, on a daily basis, but every time I've ever visited there, every piece of coral just looks so much, so healthy. And I've always likened uh, really healthy Acropora polyps to like little fireworks display, especially in these extremely polyped out uh, Acropora tenuous. And uh, just to keep you on your toes, here's a nice uh, view of the Raja Rampage Mycetium chalice in their other show tank. I really hope that you enjoyed this newest episode of the Reef Builders Recap. Your comments have been so supportive and it really, really means a lot to know that you guys are getting something out of this short, informative video segment. We're getting close to the end of the year, so we don't expect to see a lot more new announcements leading into the holiday season. But I can tell you that what I'm going to be doing is some annual recaps. So in previous years, I've written blog posts talking about the best new reef species of the whole year, the top stories of the year, my favorite products of the year. And this year I'm gonna experiment with doing something completely different and putting all those into a video format for you guys to enjoy right here on YouTube. If you enjoy these videos, please like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. It helps us out a lot. And also, while you're at it, if you've watched a few episodes, let me know what you like about these episodes and what you want to see a little bit more of. Definitely, you, you want to stay tuned because I have a lot more great videos on the way. We are ramping up to do a lot of great things next year. There's going to be some amazing giveaways. We're, I'm going to be giving away some really valuable prize packs. We're talking about livestock, pumps, lights, you name it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Again, it, all your words, all your comments, every bit of support that you send my way is really, really helps. I really appreciate it. I really hope you enjoyed this newest episode of the Reef Builders Recap and definitely look out for some great new videos here in the coming weeks.